Maybe that can work? We'll have to take a look at it. Alright, let's see. Class U Factory not found. Well, Unreal Ed there is supposed to be working. Um, I don't want to compile this. Let's see. Don't parse header in. I'm not getting any answers. What I want to do is I don't want to include this file in the build if it's an editor. So maybe there's like exclude header for client build Unreal. Excluding folder from build. Yeah, people are like, have you considered using a new module? I'll be like, I, you know, this is a simple goddamn problem, and it should have a simple solution. It shouldn't have, like, okay, now you have to, you know, do a whole bunch of random crap. It's like, give me a fucking break. I just want to not compile this header file. We switch to development from development client to development editor. Come on, Visual Studio, you can switch files. I mean, the project files, the solution files are all generated, aren't they? So, come on, Visual Studio, don't lock up for no damn reason. Too late. Alright, so if we run generate project files, let me reload everything. Ah, Visual Studio is just a pain in the ass for these things. Visual Studio is just going to be screwed here, isn't Think we can't. 
I could have a build generated file um, for this. But that's not going to work if we want to like do a shipping build from within the editor. This is just fucking stupid. Like, come on. I just want it, the, uh, the Unreal header tool to do, you know, the impossible, which is, you know, just like not generate a fucking class here. This is really simple. Like, this feature is not, not complicated. You know, just don't parse the next line or something you know it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to do some simple operation And if I have to go make an entire goddamn editor module for this thing, I think that is just idiotic. Because I don't even think I can mess with it even then. Like, I have to... They just really don't like you doing this sort of stuff. You know, calling like create texture. Oh my god. You know, what a what a freaking nightmare to be able to make an actual U object inside of one of your blueprints for something and then basically mask out that code for you know runtime. Yeah, and here's our conditional compile is all screwed and doesn't get supported anymore because the generate project files has absolutely no memory of project files. Including or excluding things in the build. So what the hell are we supposed to do with this stuff? Like we can't change U factory and we can't change any of this other crap. Uh, we can't hook into pretty much any of these things for the build. We have to get it to work how it works. If we want the editor to actually do what we want. Hello, Cynocron. I am unhappy with the Unreal header tool. Great, so I can't actually do any of this crap. So we can't actually skip the definition of something. Is there some way we can stub something out? Man, what a freaking nightmare. What's wrong with the header tool? Uh, it's not respecting, well, 
what we can't do is we can't it's not respecting the, the, the with editor stuff so like basically I have stuff that I only want to compile with the editor so this line right here really should be you know like if def with editor um, You know something like this and this doesn't work this doesn't get parsed properly and I can't replace like a string in here it's like ah, oh, it's missing the class declaration It'd be like all right okay so why don't we just take this and throw it outside and you know do it like this and then it's you know, ah, uh, well, this thing has to derive from you object. You know, class must inherit from you object. And it's like, well, you know, we just can't parse anything. It's just a pile of crap. And I can't not put this in a header file. It has to go in a header file, otherwise it doesn't work. Nope, that is the correct name. And it has nothing to do with... No, it, it's not like a, an actual pound of fun, right? Like, the Unreal, the Unreal header tool does its own thing before the preprocessor has changed the file at all. So... It has no concept of actual proper definitions of pound if defs and everything else. So if I like inspected them, it would you know show me what I would want, but that's not what's actually being used by the code generator. And really, it's just I need to swap u factory and u object right in there, and we'll be finished. But I can't do that, and I can't include u factory at all. I mean, could I make a U factory thing? But no, that's going to collide with the other thing. You know, I could make a pound else. Pound include dash can runtime. Uh, I tried pound if, but the documentation specifically said use if def. And that they only supported it, so I'm using pound if def because their examples use if def. So it's more likely they actually supported if def properly because, you know, this isn't like a real parser. If it was a real preprocessor parser, it would just work, right? Obviously, it's not. And they have, you know, Well, let's see if we can just throw something together here. And if this U factory doesn't collide with something, then that would be that would be nice. And we're really just we need to find the magical incantation to get the Unreal header tool to include one file but not another. And I don't want to do a whole bunch of other crazy, ridiculous shenanigans. If def include Unreal Ed that age, wait. But we're not with the editor. It should not include this file.
Well, it's not a preprocessor because it it actually parses your header files, looks for the macros, and then makes generated code based on the macros. All right, so what is this? This editor utils, fatal error cannot include Unreal Ed. Well, it should be compiled out. Like... We're missing a semicolon here. Yeah, that's a pretty brief processor. Yeah, yeah. Duplicate class U factory also exists in file script slash and real ed. Yeah, so we can't define another class and do any of that sort of stuff. Otherwise, it doesn't work regardless of any of this. Well, this has nothing to do with the actual C++ preprocessor and everything to do with the NREL header tools preprocessing. And of course, we don't have the code for the preprocessor itself, I don't believe. So I can't just look at it and see what it does. Well, I might actually have it. Maybe we can just build a new version of this thing, which doesn't have doesn't have this crap maybe we can just edit the preprocessor uh, well if we can do that then we can, we can get all this working and really all we need to do is we need to make it so that We can completely exclude a class. So we can do this. That's what we want to do. This class no longer exists. I'll just separate it out simply. That way I should be able to just do um, fix the one error and see what happens. Uh, print, the print statement would never be called because you know we're getting our errors inside of the header, the pre-preprocessor, which is not going to actually respect any macros or rules or prints or anything like that. 
So there's there's really nothing we can do. We basically want this error, this U class inside preprocessor block will be skipped to not be an error, but maybe like a warning or something. All right, so this is at line seven nine six two. You can tell this is well written if they have a class that's like twelve thousand lines of actual code. <laughs> no, it is. It is not being ignored. If it was being ignored, I'd be done. And see, this is how they're doing their pre-processing. If like, you know, if def or, yeah, <laughs> or if in def. All right. So this is what I'm talking about with stuff being. You know, just like hard coded in here super awfully. Well, let's just see if the naive solution of uh, just removing this works. Which is kind of silly. It'd be like, well, you know, if I pr if I pound to find this thing out, just just skip it. <laughs> like, fuck. I don't see I don't see why this is an error. It's it's like, yeah, okay, we we told you to get rid of something, so go, don't be surprised when I want it gone. And of course, this is going to have to go on top of this other thing, but let's see if this compiles first in the editor. And if we have to modify the Unreal header tool, what we're going to have to make sure is that we actually build the Unreal header tool inside of our build process before we build the rest of it. Which I think we do, but like, you know, hell if I know.
All right, well, we'll just keep messing with this a little bit at a time. So why is this getting all angry on me now? Like, with editor should be supported. <laughs> Development editor. Let's see, class header text stripped of CPP text. A directive, parse command block directive, unrecognized block. Yeah, we allow unrecognized directives with iron to have the rest of the We don't actually change how process the pound melts blocks. See, this is what I'm talking about. Is like I don't know if pound melts works. It's like yeah, guess it's looking like it's correct. Okay, so something's happening here where U class is getting. taken out or something like that. Let's see if that builds the header tool. Doesn't look like it builds the header tool. Great. Fucking amazing. We can't we can't include an editor plugin in something that's supposed to be a runtime plugin. I mean, does this mean we have to change everything about how we're dealing with these assets? Yeah, so the problem is it's going to strip out basically, it's it's not going to do its U-class stuff inside of here. I'd have to change quite a bit inside of the header parser, it looks like, or something. Where it's not going to actually work properly. So let's think. Um, we have to have a factory in order to actually make this. Is there a generic... Can we get rid of the need for the generic texture factory and then just pretend this issue never exists at all? Uh, we might be able to. Um, look, the only th reason we need it is this create asset.
Let's see. We want to create texture asset and at runtime Unreal. So I don't know if this issue is not not going to work. Um, you know, like we're just not going to be able to do this. Um, we need to figure out a different way to create this texture asset itself. Um, Because I remember there was like some right texture binary. Because we've got this factory basically, which is calling create texture 2D. Um, I mean, as long as the code exists inside of something that we can include as opposed to define, then maybe it could work. So, I mean, I could go throw this generic texture factory crap inside of something else, um, which is included in, like, an editor-only module. Which would be pretty hack hacky, but... Let's just search for texture factory and see if something already exists. Alright, so a texture factory already does exist, and we might be able to to use it instead. So why don't we just see if we can get rid of this garbage here and we can get rid of this pound include unreal ed inside of here and you know just put that inside of the CPP file and then if we can you know, use this factory slash texture factory dot H.
and see what it uses. So we're gonna make a new re-import texture factory. It's we just want a U texture factory. So it should be texture factory dot H. Supposedly. Alright, so texture factory. Alright, so what we want is we were setting use alpha defer compression compression settings is something that we need to set. Alright, so compression settings. Uh, create material, two sided blending, shading model, LOD. And then we'll have to immediately call update on it. So we'll use it just to create the uh, the texture uh, asset itself. So we'll cast that asset in there. Um, U texture 2D static class. So we just set the compression settings. Actually, we don't have to set anything here. We'll just um, we'll just make it straight up vanilla texture, and then we'll fill out all of its data and do that, and we'll see if that works. So we're basically going to succeed by choosing to fail and um, doing something else entirely, which sometimes is the best option to be like, well, then we can't really do that. Let's find something else. Of course, this basically means if we had any factories and we wanted to make a runtime here, we'd have some issues with it, and we might want to make it you know, an editor, editor plugin or something. You know, if we were like a larger studio, this would be a problem where it's like, okay, we fundamentally need some place where we can stick editor specific code and um, have it work properly. Like, we would need instead of just an editor plugin and a runtime plugin, we would need an editor plugin, a runtime plug plugin, and a runtime editor plugin for our project. Alright, so supposedly that all compiled. So. Let's make sure it compiles inside of the client as well. So I guess that's always one thing to think about. Is if you at first don't succeed, give up and try something else. Frustrating that we don't have, you know, that we go learn basically that Unreal header tool doesn't, just doesn't support stuff. Maybe they'll fix it eventually, but if it's been busted since like 2014, like the some of the forum posts where people trying to use stuff um, for Amazon, like their GameWorks or whatever packages or GameSparks or whatever the hell program they're trying to use. Alright, so both the client and the server, I mean, editor compiled. Let's make sure that the editor actually works. Um, that we can create our static texture. And that it behaves the same way. I guess Adam's actually streaming this week. What? What? He's doing... He's back to his, his normal self? That's amazing.
So we'll finally get to actually booting up the editor. <laughs> I always just make things difficult, don't I? Everything I do is impossible. Alright, so let's just move this a little bit. And then, yeah, we'll check out all of our files here. So let's construct our height map, make sure it saves. And that looks like it actually worked a bit. So let's go ahead and save. Let's do our save all. Save all. And let's close. I didn't see a, um, a save prompt for the texture though. A checkout for it. So that's kind of annoying. It saved the built data, but I don't think it saved the texture. Which I think I was going over that last time is that you can't actually call like save on individual assets. Yeah, it didn't save the texture. So why don't we just Google that real quick? Save specific US at Unreal. <laughs> I like how there's literally just like nothing for that. Alright, so if we go to our test levels. check them out. Alright, so it did actually save an update if you manually go save and update them, which is kind of annoying. Well, let's take another quick look at what we actually need to do to save an asset. I mean, we have this mark package is dirty. So let's see if there's like this U object utility, if there's any object flags that we can do. Transient, need load, will be loaded. I mean, we can mark packages dirty, but that's ah, so stupid. Well, maybe that's what we have to do.
um, for this thing. Well, let's just see if that'll do it. Um, what we want to do is see if this thing actually, you know, we just want to say to the asset that you need to actually save yourself. I mean, you'd think these things would be simple, right? I've edited an asset in code. Ah, that guy's obviously not not the sort that should be hanging around this chat room. Alright, so let's see if this actually does mark some of this for saving. Well, it says they're unsaved at least, so if we do this there we go, it actually marked it. Okay. Cool. Well, I will be right back, and we'll get back to working on this. And so we started off with some housekeeping stuff, just trying to figure out, you know, some basics. And uh, I think we've successfully done that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check this stuff in real quick. Uh, the CPP and CS and all that stuff. So I'm going to move this to another change list. The CPP files.
So hopefully uh, I can go kick off the builds here and they will succeed. So if anybody's interested in how we actually build stuff, I can explain that, but build systems aren't exactly entertaining topics unless you're somebody who likes build systems, in which case uh, you'll always have employment because nobody else likes build systems. But I basically got a, a server over next to my desk which builds everything in the project and does whatever it needs to every night. Which is real handy. Uh, that's the sort of thing where um, you'll you know you'll actually break the build on accident on you know forget to check in a file or something you know an asset doesn't cook and it'll break and then tell you and when you're especially working on a small project I think it's almost more important to have at least just a naive automated build because you won't know things are busted and you'll have like some horrible problem which you created but then like when it actually affects you is like your machine dies or something or you move to another workspace or you know another person comes onto the project and then all of a sudden nothing works kind of like with um, harmony you've got like these color palettes and stuff like that and if you're sharing a harmony file with somebody uh, those color palettes aren't going to exist on their computer so like none of your stuff will work so you have to find those sorts of errors kind of really quick to start with, otherwise you get like these massive overhauls you have to do to your systems because somebody else is, you know, installed on the E drive, not on the D drive, and you're fucked. And then you're just like, well, how about everybody just gets an E drive with a that's an SSD and we just forget about this? And then you're like, yeah. That makes sense. Okay, so we've got basically what we can do right now is we can look at our our distance map, which is the distance to shore, and we've also got our height map, which you can see all the heights and all that stuff of the stuff below it, which isn't super important. More the distant distance map is the thing that's actually important, which is the distance. It goes from 0 to 1. Alright, so what we need to figure out here is we were trying to kind of figure this out earlier. And what we did was... Uh, so if this stuff is our lake and the black stuff is the shore, um, we want to be able to define in geometry places, and this is like a square output for water, and this is like a circle input for water, and then this is kind of how our shore looks uh, in data. And then what we want to do is we want to figure out a flow field, which is going to actually, like we're going to have to figure out an algorithm that will actually make a flow field for us and um, then we're going to want to throw that into some sort of texture where we have these pre-built in uh, vectors and magnitudes for flow. So if somebody puts in like a waterfall over here, um, this water asset can look at that say like, okay, this water is real close to me. It's supposed to be outputting, you know, how many gallons per second or whatever the hell and then we can figure out what we need. So what sort of information are we going to want? Should it be based on the distance from shore? Um, so like an input, because we don't need to be completely realistic. Well, the color palettes don't always get saved in the project file, right? Like you can use color palettes across multiple project files and save them in like a other, your know, like asset database thing for Harmony. I don't know. I don't know all the right terminology, but I'm sure you could talk to Adam about it and he would he'd be like, oh yeah, the color palettes, and then like go on for like 20 minutes about how stupid it was. 
Or he might just say, I don't even remember what the hell we did to solve that because it was so long ago. Which is kind of where I am. So what information are we going to need for this, this thing? Um, we have the distance from shore. But if we have the flow based only on the distance from shore, then it wouldn't matter how deep something is. So like if you had an input to a very shallow part, you know, you'd expect a greater flow because there's less water there, right? Or whatever. Do we care about depth? I mean, we could combine the depth in there, but would it, do we need it? So the question would be, do we ever have some sort of situation where We need to draw a few um, few things here, don't we? Why don't we just... I can't easily mess with this. So if we've got another thing here... So why don't we just draw some of the situations that we might have. With our water. So what we'd have up here would be a square input and we'd have a square output. And as a result of this, we would have, you know, stuff that would go So let's see, are there any, like that's kind of a naive water situation there. If we had a more complicated water situation, let's say we have like a river that goes into a lake or something like that, how the hell would that work? So we've got like a river, and we've got a, a lake area. 